This legendary mystery beast still haunts the woods. This world is a strange one. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the skunk ape, no matter what you call him, I'm sure there's one of his kind near you. Sighted everywhere around the world, these tall, hairy bipeds seem to mind their own business in the woods, sometimes. But when someone happens upon them, that's when things might get dangerous. Don't let your sighting turn into an unknown animal killing. Enjoy these seven allegedly real Bigfoot sightings. But first, I want to thank everyone who helped this channel by sharing my previous video. It really made a difference. So please, all of my most loyal viewers out there, share this video and spread the word to the world that Darkness Prevails provides free nightmares. Thank you. Also, just in time for Christmas, almost a bit too late, I've got a couple new t-shirt designs for you guys. There's the Merry Xmas with a couple of knives in the background for that slasher flick vibe. And then there's the only the cool kids have nightmares design, but only buy it if you're a cool kid. Them's the rules. Get yours today for only $15. Read a thousand scary stories or watch more videos over at darknessprevails.org. Shameless self-promotion out of the way. Don't let me keep you from these nightmares any longer. Number one, Bigfoot is out there. Submitted by Brittany. Let me say, I know there are critics out there that will always question the existence of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, or whatever people choose to call it. I was just like you, until one night changed everything. I thought I knew everything there was to know about this creature, mainly that it didn't exist. But this story takes place in a campground in Northern Oregon. Each year around Christmas time, my husband Shane and I take a camping trip, and we always go to the same campground and I've been doing this for three years now. It's pretty secluded, but we've never had any issues. My husband's work buddy and his wife, let's call them Nick and Jess, always accompany us on this trip. We have a fairly nice RV, so the cold weather isn't really an issue since there's a sufficient amount of heat inside. We really enjoy camping around this time because the campground is virtually empty and we enjoy having it all to ourselves. Within the campground, there are hundreds of acres of dense forests. Something about being out there on our own with nothing but the sounds of wildlife and howling wind puts it all into perspective about how big our planet really is. So this is my story. Each year, usually during the first or second weekend of December, that's when we take our annual Christmas camping trip. Now in the beginning, we never really planned to have a camping tradition, especially around this time. But the first time we did it, we enjoyed it so much that it sort of just became something we started doing. We like to escape our fast-paced lives, even if it's just for a couple of days. The particular days we picked this year were going to be cold. No precipitation though, so that was nice. On that Friday after we all got off work, we packed up our things and headed out for the hour and a half drive to the campground. We got to the gate to pay our fees and the worker was a little surprised to see us, as the person there usually is every year. He said we're the only ones there. Not surprised, we nodded and headed in to find a spot. The spot we chose was very nice. It was a clearing of about 30 yards. On three sides of us was forest and to the north we could see out a great distance. We could see the mountains as well as a portion of the Mackenzie River. We brought some of our own firewood and the men began to set a fire going while myself and Jess were in the RV beginning dinner. I had prepared a pot of potato soup beforehand. So it was easy to heat that up on our small electric stovetop cooker in the RV. It was a perfect hot meal to contrast the cold evening by this time, the sun was beginning to set. That's one drawback about this time of year. It gets so dark so early. We finished our meal and headed into the warmth of the RV. We spent the rest of the evening snacking on popcorn and playing cards against humanity. I know, sounds like we drove all the way out there just to play some silly games, but we enjoyed it. And it was fun to just relax and be in the company of good friends. I would say it was around 11 that night when we headed to bed. We have a pull-out style bed in the main part of the RV and a bedroom in the back portion. Jess and Nick slept on the pull-out bed while my husband and I took the bedroom. The way we had parked the RV, our bedroom was facing out to the view of the mountains and river. Now, I've always been one to struggle with insomnia. I usually take a natural substance called melatonin to help me sleep. Of course, on this night, I had forgotten it. Unlike me, my husband was out like a light. I tossed and turned for about an hour until I decided to lay on my stomach and just look out the window. 
Our bed sat high up, and we had a large window that was able to look out, even while laying on the bed. It looked so peaceful outside, and I could actually see a lot since the moon was full and so bright. It seemed to illuminate the entire sky. It was both relaxing and a little bit spooky at the same time. The trees cast various shadows on the ground. It was about this time that something off in the distance caught my eye. I could definitely tell that it was some kind of animal, but I honestly had no clue as to what it was. Now, I'll tell you, we were really far away from whatever this was, at least 1,000 feet. I continued staring at the thing for a while. I noticed a couple more of whatever this was emerge from the trees, and at this point, they began making their way down the mountain or large hill, whatever they were. I was guessing that they were making their way down to the edge of the river. It was hard to keep track of them at first, because they were constantly in and out of view due to the trees. But I was sure that there were three of them all together. Two were very large and one was small. Once they were about three quarters of the way down, I immediately felt chills go down my spine. I realized that these creatures were walking upright, on two legs. The way they walked and their immense size, they weren't humans and they weren't bears. If I were to guess, I would say that the two larger ones stood at least seven feet and the small one was probably six. I found myself rubbing my eyes several times to make sure my mind wasn't just playing tricks on me, that what I was actually seeing was real. I attempted to zoom my phone's camera in on them, but there was still no way to tell what they were. I wished I had brought a pair of binoculars or something so I could get a better view. Once they made it down to the edge of the river, I nudged my husband awake. I quietly whispered to him, look out the window. When he saw him, his eyes widened and he became instantly completely awake. We were both on high alert and wide awake at this point. He told me to go get Nick and Jess, saying that Nick had to see this for himself. My husband knew that Nick was the type of guy if we just said it to him that he would not believe it. I woke Nick and Jess and they tiredly followed me back to the bedroom. They were both amazed and confused as to what they were seeing, as all of us were. We all just lay there in a row on the bed and we continued watching them for a good 20 minutes. Their movements were so human-like and never once did they get down on four legs. I literally can't think of anything else they might've been. I believe what we were looking at were Bigfoots. They continued to walk around the edge of the river and just as quickly as they had shown up, they disappeared back into the forest. We all stayed awake for a long time after that, just staring out that window and talking about how we couldn't believe what we had just seen. Morning came and we packed up our things to head back home. We never really mentioned the experience to any other friends or family. We knew they wouldn't believe us and many people might even ask why we didn't leave the RV and try to get a closer look. I guess we could have done that, but we were so amazed and intimidated by what we saw that we didn't even think about going outside. Former skeptic as I was, I am now a full believer of Bigfoot, as are Jess, Nick, and my husband, Shane. This experience will not stop us from going camping. We're actually preparing to head out at the end of this week. Maybe we'll see something, and maybe we won't, but I'm really thankful for the experience we all had. But if you're out there in Northern Oregon, make sure you don't go alone and that you stay safe. I don't think these creatures are dangerous, but then again, they weren't aware of our presence as we were aware of them. Number two, Almost Bigfoot. Submitted by Mystic Blitz. Last year, I had a not so merry Christmas and by not so merry, I mean terrifying. The day was December 24th of 2015. I was visiting family in a small town named Livonia in Michigan. We were staying at my aunt's house. Where she lived, it was backed up to a rather large forest. Me and my younger cousins were playing around outside and we were all hiding from each other, playing some random made up game. We were some creative kids. I was hiding a little too deep in the woods, deep enough to give a creepy vibe, but not enough to really scare me. That is, not until I heard a loud crack and I'm not talking about some animal stepping on a twig. It sounded like someone or something very large breaking a branch. I looked around cautiously and slowly, and it wasn't long before I saw a giant figure walking away from a fallen tree. 
Just looking at the tree, it looked like it had been split clean in half. I sat there on the snowy ground, petrified, just trying to get a better look at that large creature. The thing easily towered over me and must have been maybe seven, eight, nine feet tall. Almost immediately, what came with the goosebumps was the thought that this creature was a Bigfoot. But it looked like nothing that I'd come to expect from the media. What I was looking at was not completely covered in fur, just some patches on its back. I nearly died when I felt a hand on my back. Suddenly, I hear my cousin's voice right in my ear. Found you. I didn't turn away. I watched as the large creature turned around and it let out a roar louder than anything I've ever heard. And when it began to charge at us, I thought it was going to kill me. And that's when everything went black. The next thing I remember is waking up at my aunt's house. At first, I thought I had a dream, but then everyone was around me. My mom saw me awake and rushed over to me. I asked, what happened? She replied worriedly, your cousin came in and got us. He said you passed out. He said that he and you both saw something in the woods. I don't know what you kids were doing out there, she said in a shaking voice. When we found you out there, you were passed out cold on the ground. I looked at her face and she looked like she wasn't done, but she was hesitant to say the rest. Eventually though, she did. You kids need to be more careful out there. There are bears and such. Not a few feet from where you passed out, there were footprints in the snow, big ones too. At this point, I was terrified all over again, realizing that what I experienced was no dream. I talked later with my cousin and he confirms that what we saw was nothing like a bear. Since this experience, I've been pretty reluctant to go back to my aunt's house or just go outside alone. After that, I haven't heard from my cousins or my aunt. They are moving soon apparently now that they found a new house. But that roar, the sound of that roaring, I will never forget it. As with many cases of sightings like this, it might sound made up. Even if you think it's not true, stay vigilant out there and cautious. There are things that we've never seen and heeding the advice of stories like this, it might just save your life. Number three, did I just see a Bigfoot? Submitted by Mad Nat. This happened when I was about 18 or 19. Now, I am a girl of average build. We live in Canada on an acreage that backs onto a beaver pond with a creek that runs along the edge of the property. There's also a forest that skirts around the back of the house before jutting out towards the creek and around the beaver pond. There's a large hilly field that surrounds our property on three sides the fourth side being just a dirt road. The creek that runs through our horse pasture is lined with willow trees, and that makes it difficult to see very much through them. I hope this gives enough detail to you on the layout of my parents' land. I had two horses at the time, as well as three dogs. The dogs stay in the house for the most part, so they do not come into play in this story. I was home alone on a late summer day when I decided to look out my large bay window. I usually do this to check on my horses. I knew something was up because of how they were acting. Heads up high with ears pointed forward and bodies tensed up. They were looking into those willows by the creek before they would run away and stop to look back again. This is how they act if they saw something that they did not understand and were scared of. The house was almost 200 yards away and up a bit of a hill, so I had a pretty good vantage point from the yard. I looked for a couple of minutes to see if I could see anything, but I saw nothing. So I brushed it off as probably a deer or moose since being in the country, that is a pretty common thing to see. I returned to my computer when I got a nagging feeling that something was off still. There was something wrong about how the horses were acting. I decided to look outside again to see if they had calmed down at all, but they were still acting agitated and now they were closer to the beaver pond. Due to being home alone in the country, I thought it might be a good idea to grab a weapon to take out with me in case something really was out there. I strapped on my hunting knife, then put on my shoes and headed out to where the horses were. I listened and I looked around, trying to see if I could see what the horses were riled up about, but there was no luck. I hopped the fence and went over to my horse named Grace. She was a very sweet horse and I felt a connection to her. At that time, I noticed the horses were now looking farther toward the forest beyond the beaver pond. I walked closer to the willows by the creek, 
while keeping a close eye on the horses to make sure I didn't get in the way if they decided to bolt all of a sudden. Then I heard the snap of a tree branch and I looked up and froze. I saw something moving along the tree line. It had that dark brown, almost black color of a moose. But this thing was not a moose. It was walking on two legs and its arms were long and built, swinging close to its knees. Not to mention its hair was long, not short like that of a horse or deer. And it was colossal. This thing was at least eight feet tall. I honestly couldn't believe my eyes. I thought I was imagining things when my horse Grace ran in front of me while staring at whatever this thing was. She snorted a warning. I realized that I was not imagining this thing. It was definitely real, and I had no idea what it could have been. My other horses decided to run back to the safety of the barn, which was on the complete other side of the pasture. Normally, Grace would follow, but it seemed like she did not want to leave me alone. I had a chill go through me as I realized how vulnerable I was out in the open, so far away from my house. I slowly walked back through the pasture with Grace right there with me, both of us staring back over our shoulders. I wanted to run, but I was afraid that if I did, I would trip or Grace would run too and go too far ahead of me. I tried to stay calm. Even though this thing was walking in the opposite direction of us and across the beaver pond, I did not feel comfortable at all. Once I got back to the barn, I felt more at ease leaving the safety of my horse's side, and I went back to the house. I made sure to lock the door, and I didn't speak a word of it to anyone. I thought that there was no way I saw Bigfoot. I honestly have no idea what else it could have been, though. I guess I was in denial. There's no way it could have been a moose or a bear or any other animal I know of. I've never seen it again, but I'll never forget that day. Number four, Arizona's Beast, submitted by Big Papa. Before I get this started, this is my dad's story, a story of his encounter with something. It was the year 2000 and my dad was about 21 years old. His brother, my uncle Cody, was 18 and my uncles Dylan and John, who were both eight and five, went hunting up in Snowflake, Arizona. I believe they were hunting elk, so they were walking through the woods to a homemade deer stand that they had set up. Cody and my dad had made the thing a year back. They were sitting up in the stand when they heard this noise in the distance. Cody grabbed his rifle and took aim at the thing, and that's when he turned pale. My dad got one look at his face and got chills. Then he asked, what is it? Cody said, we need to go. Then they heard a scream. My dad said it sounded like a dying cat and a horse mixed. So my dad grabbed Dylan and John and they ran to his 4x4 and started the engine. Before leaving, he looked behind him. He saw something very tall, built, and covered in fur. He says it looked like Bigfoot. He stepped on the gas and Cody looked behind them and he saw this thing keeping up with them. So my dad took out his 22 and shot at it, and that thing changed course and soon disappeared. After a long while of driving, they parked and they sat for a while, but that's not all of it. Somehow, though they had driven miles and miles and thought they were completely safe by then, that thing appeared at the door and tried to get into Cody. My dad reached in the back for his shotgun and he ended up shooting at the thing again this time it screamed in pain and ran back into the woods. They immediately drove back to Snowflake and they went right to a hospital where my uncle Cody got dozens of stitches in his arm. The thing had broken the glass. Yes, they did report the attack and the police simply said it was a bear attack, but my dad told my family the truth about it. The next day, my dad went back to the spot where they saw the thing, but there were police there barricading the area. He's 36 now, and he says he will never go back to that area ever again. Number five, Connecticut Bigfoot, submitted by David. For most of my life, I've lived in a small town in Fairfield County, Connecticut. I wasn't new to scary stories about ghosts, intruders, and stalkers, but what I saw was far from these. It all started in January of 2011. I was waiting at the bus stop earlier than I usually would, so nobody was walking down the street. 
The morning felt off, but I ignored it, as I thought it was just loneliness or something. But that quickly turned into fear, as I heard a loud scream that sounded like a lower-pitched, stretch-out yell of a coyote. It immediately sent shivers down my whole body. I wish the story would end there, but it doesn't. After school, I would usually hang out with my friends. Let's call them Liam and Charlotte. Now, Liam, Charlotte, and I would proceed with our usual shenanigans down by the brook in the woods. There was a small bridge that would lead to thicker woods that we go to to build teepees and little forts and just hang out. As we were halfway through the bridge, I heard that same bone-chilling yell. What the hell was that? Coco asked, sounding concerned. We all looked at each other and decided to call it a day. As we quickly walked out into the light, we went up the snowy hill and that's when something caught our eye. It was a tall, maybe nine-foot creature that had brown hair and a Hulk-like build covered in fur. What was shocking is that it ran across the brook in two steps. This brook had to have been about 30 feet across. We froze at what we saw, and then eventually we ran up the hill across the other side of the banks. When we thought it was safe, we eventually went back and checked out the footprints in the snow, and they were gigantic, bigger than any humans. I can't find any other explanation for what it could have been. It wasn't a bear and it was not a man. This incident still freaks me out to this day, although I still go out in the woods. I've never seen the creature again, and I haven't heard any other accounts of the thing. So I'm hoping others can relate or give me some closure and prove that I'm not just insane. Number six, Attack in the Woods. Submitted by Marlo the Great. Let me start off by saying that this is not a story I've told to anyone. This encounter happened in the woods of southern New Jersey. My girlfriend, her sister Shelly, and her boyfriend Craig and I decided to take a two-day camping trip in the woods. It was an hour drive from our apartment in Philadelphia, without traffic. So to avoid the traffic, we woke up early in the morning. Otherwise, if we were too late, the drive itself would be three and a half hours. Eventually, we arrived in Burlington, New Jersey, and I stopped at the Acme grocery store and bought some chicken, bread, hot dogs, and a case of water, plus a few other snacks for us to live off of for the two-day adventure. We took a back road towards the rural area of the county, which was close to the military base. We arrived at our destination and wasted no time getting out of the car. The area was wasteland, there were no cars passing on the turnoff and nobody was parked there at all. It was completely quiet. It was so nice and so peaceful, but I got this feeling of dread. But I tried to suppress it. I didn't want to ruin the trip for myself or anyone. We spent the next half hour finding a perfect spot to set up camp. We ended up picking a spot that was near a clearing by a service road and a line of telephone poles. We set up camp and nightfall came fast. My girlfriend and her sister set up the tent as me and Craig built the fire and put the chairs around it. By the time it was all done, it was already about nine that night. As we sat around the fire, I got up to take a piss behind a tree about 20 yards from the tent. As I was doing my business, the woods fell dead silent. All activity was gone. It was very bizarre. No crickets or bird calls, just complete and utter silence. That feeling of dread came back, and as I finished up, I began to feel like I was not alone, as if something was watching me. I walked back to the campsite, and I asked them if they noticed how the area suddenly fell quiet. They all looked at me like I was crazy and just brushed it off as a common trait of the wilderness. We set out talking and laughing until about 12 midnight. Then we hit the tent for the night. I lay next to my girlfriend next to the mesh window, which was open. After about half an hour of just lying there, I began to doze off. I was just about to fall asleep when I was startled by a deer running at full speed through the campsite. At the time, it didn't seem too odd, so I tried to go back to bed, and after some time calming down, I finally managed to fall asleep. At about 2.30 in the morning, I was woken up by my girlfriend who was frantically shaking me awake. She was wide-eyed and pale as snow. I set up trying to calm her down to find out what the problem was. At this point, Shelly and Craig were wide awake confused about the whole commotion going on. My girlfriend finally calms down and began to tell me that something was moving around, something in the tree line, letting off growling noises. My initial thought was that she heard a bear. Craig and myself grabbed our guns and we exited the tent. We walked around the perimeter. 
The woods were still dead silent. We walked around for about 15 minutes, and after finding nothing, we headed back to the tent. We ended up telling the girls that it was nothing more than a deer passing through the area. We all managed to go back to sleep, but only a few minutes later, I was woken up by something in the woods. It sounded like someone was walking back and forth in the trees. I looked out of the mesh window quietly, but I didn't see anything. It was just darkness. I woke Craig up quietly to avoid waking the girls. I didn't want anyone to panic. I told him about the sounds I was hearing off in the brush, and we sat there just listening. It sounded like it was about 15 yards away from our camp, and it was steadily getting closer. And that's when we heard the grunting. These were deep, guttural, aggressive grunts. Whatever it was, it was big. The footsteps were loud, heavy, and steady. It sounded like it was walking on two feet. So at first, I thought it was a person, maybe a homeless man or a hermit, drunk out of his mind. At that moment, again, I grabbed my gun. And soon after, that's when it happened. We were all hit by this blood-curdling, screaming roar. It was so loud and powerful, I felt like my organs were vibrating. The girls were instantly awake. It stopped as soon as it started, though. I was greatly terrified at this point, in the midst of this creature roaring. I was subconsciously gripping my gun so tight. Greg went outside of the tent first, while my girlfriend and Shelly and I closed up the mesh windows. Then I stepped out of the tent as well, and was hit with this gut-wrenching smell. It was horrible and wretched. My stomach began to turn as I fought the urge to puke. God, I can't even smell it as I type this right now. We began to walk around the edge of the woods, guns fixed on the darkness, not knowing what the hell was out there. We were scared. I reached the spot of my previous bathroom break, and just then a tree branch came flying over our heads. It crashed into the chairs behind us where the fire was. And once again, that loud roar came, though this one was much shorter. We kept our guns at the ready. I could hear fast-paced, heavy footsteps coming toward us. I took maybe 10 steps back, turned around and ran back to the tent where the girls were. I told them, we need to get out of here immediately. I looked up from the tent and I saw Craig staring into the brush, slowly walking backwards towards us. I looked in the same direction he was looking and that's when I saw the thing. It was standing about eight and a half feet tall. It was this huge, dark figure and it was extremely lean. There was enough moonlight breaking through the trees to see the definition of its arms and chest. It was all black with shiny black fur. It had red glowing eyes. I pushed the girls back inside the tent and told them to shut it. I don't know what I was thinking. I looked back over the tent and I was staring right at it and it was staring back at me while Craig was standing there next to me. At that moment, I made the biggest mistake. Our eyes were fixed on one another for about 10 seconds and it let off another roar. My body trembled with fear, but it was soon replaced with adrenaline, so I raised my gun and I aimed it at the creature's chest. Craig grabbed me hard by the shoulder and he said, I don't think that's a good idea. And then it hit me. He was right, this thing was huge and angry. And then the thing started to walk towards us. I fired at the ground in its direction to try to scare it, but it completely ignored it. The moonlight above soon showed its inhuman face, and after a few moments, I was sure that this thing was not human. I felt both more calm and more scared, but if this thing was some animal, I, I could shoot it. I could defend myself for sure. So with the gun still aimed at its chest, I, I shot, and the moment I did, I heard the thing scream. Its face scrunched and it gave off a growl, and at this point, it was standing in the open. It had the face of a person almost, but it definitely wasn't one. It was far too large and unproportional. Plus, there was no neck. After my previous shot, the thing stumbled back and fell to the ground. It took off into the woods. I wasted no time grabbing the girls and telling them that we need to go now. Luckily, the car was only about 50 yards from our campsite. We ran through the brush at full speed, and I could hear something off in the distance, keeping pace with us. When we reached the vehicle, we all hopped in fast. My girlfriend, who had the keys, hopped in and started the thing and we peeled out of there so fast, heading toward the main road. I looked out of the rear view, and I don't know if it was the same one or a different one, but something like that thing was chasing us. We must have been doing 70 down that dirt road. Luckily, it suddenly stopped and turned off back into the woods. We reached the service road and turned left, 
not checking for any cars out of panic, and we just drove straight home. The car ride was quiet until Craig broke the silence. What in the bloody hell was that thing? Shelly then replied saying it must have been some bear. I immediately shot that down. I explained to her the description of this creature. Her eyes grew wide. We made it home by six in the morning. Since that day, I have never went camping, and I don't plan on doing so in the near future. This experience has left me traumatized. I, to this day, have nightmares about the thing. We've all assumed that this thing must have been Bigfoot. Before this, I always thought Bigfoot was a little far-fetched, but to this day, all I can say was thank goodness Craig and I had brought our guns. I have no idea what could have happened to us if we didn't have something to scare it off. I have now become a full believer of Bigfoot after this encounter. And number seven, run in with the skunk ape. Submitted by Sprugs. I've only told this story to two people. I don't really mind if you don't believe it because I know what I saw. I live in central Florida. My house is right on the beach, but if you travel two minutes inland, you're in a swamp so dense, it would be impossible to navigate if you got lost. This happened when I was five years old. Me and a couple of friends went out to the swamp to go play hide and seek. Me being the tallest, I often had to hide in very small places to play the game. When me and my friends went to hide, I went off by myself, which was a mistake. I found myself a sort of clean, hollowed out log. So I hid in there trying to avoid getting stains on my clothes. You know how kids are. Then I noticed an awful stench, like rotting flesh with rotting leaves or something. A lot of time passed, and it was very close to nighttime, so I decided to get out to leave after an hour of hiding. Then the stench got stronger. I've heard the term swamp gas before, so I just chalked it up to that. While I was walking the trail back, I saw this mound of mulch. As I was stepping over it, it stepped up right in front of me. My blood turned to ice in my veins. The thing must have been nine feet tall, and it was two feet in front of me. I was frozen, stuck. I was too close to run or scream. It simply stood there, looking at me. I couldn't see the face of this thing. It was covered in thick, curly hair, and it smelled like death. Its arms were long and lanky and went down to its knees, and I could see claws at the end. I could almost feel it myself. What felt like an eternity was mostly just a minute. I was not expecting what was going to happen next. It simply turned and left. In three long strides, it was gone in the brush. And as it did, I ran so freaking fast, I didn't even realize that I had peed myself. But that was the last thing I was worrying about. I made what was a 20-minute walk a five-minute sprint. When I got back to the parking lot, my friends were there telling one of the adults that they didn't know where I went, that they couldn't find me. And when they saw me, they all saw fear in my eyes and tears streaming down my face. So of course, they asked me what had happened. I simply said what I thought I saw at the time. I thought it was a black bear. Another part of me thought if I told them exactly what I saw that they wouldn't believe some five-year-old with an active imagination. I learned later about the skunk ape and that there were sightings all over Florida. I'm 17 now and I still drive past that trail every day, hoping to never see that thing again. The woods have eyes and they're staring right back at you. Don't just assume the woods are safe. Sure, there are cliffs that seem to come out of nowhere and it can be easy to get lost, but we seem to forget the other dangers out there, that there are things undiscovered in this world, things that stand over eight feet tall, things that could rip us apart before we even knew that we weren't alone. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to get your Merry Xmas and Only Cool Kids Have Nightmares t-shirts today. Check out darknessprevails.org for more info. Thanks.